we're going to show you two different ways for edging vents in the garments with no lining. We'll be making a mock-up. Imagine this is the back of the skirt. Natalie is drawing the center back seam. Next, we need to measure and mark 22 cm up from the bottom. This is how long the vent is going to be. Next, we need to mark the width of the vent. It is going to be 4 cm wide. The width of the seam extension is 1 by 5 cm. We are showing you the most simple way for edging the vents. This is the technique which we usually use. Let's start cutting. Natalie is making the bottom absolutely straight. The interfacing material should be cut in advance. The first detail should be as long as wide as the vent is, and the second one of the same length, but just one centimeter wide. I remind you that in our case the vent is 22 cm long. And so are the details of the interfacing material. You can also double the bottom with the interfacing material if you need to. We are not going to do it now. We just want to show you how to edge the vents of the garments with no lining in them. Let's go to the ironing desk. We are going to double one side with a bigger detail and the second one with a smaller one. How to decide to which side to press the vent? There is one very useful technique. When you turn a garment right side out this way, a vent should be on the left side of the center back seam. Be very attentive. When you turn a garment right side out, the vent should be in your left arm. Why should we know it? We need to know it in order to decide how to double the details. This is how the vent is going to be pressed. The technique I just showed you is very useful. We need to attach the 1 cm wide detail to the upper side. The interfacing material should be cut on the grain. This is very important. Next, we need to attach the bigger piece of the interfacing material to the other side. In our case, it's 22 cm long and 4 cm wide. After that, we need to edge this side with a novel locker. In order to stitch the angle, Natalie is going to cut it. She's cutting about 1.5 cm. It should be done for us to be able to stitch this edge with a novel locker without any problems. Natalie is edging the details with a novel locker. She's reached the angle. Watch the way she is stitching it.
Повернули, Be very attentive. Оверлаком наш срез шлицы. The both edges of the band should be edged with an overlocker. Please, be special attentive when stitching the angles. Don't make mistakes. We've edged the boat details, so next we need to go to the sewing machine to stitch the center back seam. We are talking just about the vents now. We are not going to show you how to stitch the zippers or any other details. Stop stitching about 1.5 or 2 cm below the angle level. Change the settings so that you get bigger stitches. Stitch the drawn line to the very bottom. The seam should be as wide as the band is. The fabric we are working with allows making seams in it. You can check the detail if it's not convenient to stitch it. I'm talking about the vent itself. It will be very convenient to work with the vent if you make a seam here. Have a look here. The first part of the seam ends on the angle level. It was fixed. Down from this point, the stitches are wider. Due to the fact that we made a seam here, it will be convenient for us to work with the vent. We won't make mistakes to press the seam open. In order to do that, first we need to iron it. Watch the way Natalie is working. She is very gentle. Next, the vent itself should be pressed close to one side. The center back seam should be pressed open. Be very accurate. Don't stretch the details. Watch the way we are working. This is the only way to do it accurately. We sometimes make notches here in order to press the details accurately. Not all the fabrics allow doing it. Be very attentive. We also don't do it in the garments with no lining in them. Have a look here. Next, we need to iron the detail doubled with one centimeter wide stripe of interfacing. It should be folded in such way that the stitched edge covers the interfacing material. We are preparing this detail for stitching. We've pressed the band close to one side, and then we fold it and press the other edge for 5 mm. We've also decided to iron the overcast at the bottom. The overcast is going to be 4 cm wide, so we need to measure and mark 8 cm up from the bottom. After that, we need to press the bottom edge to the line. I remind you that we are making a mock-up. When making an actual garment, I recommend you making a spacing seam and ironing the overcast according to it. Делать прокладочный шов, и по нему будете заутюживать. We don't want to waste time on the unnecessary things. We are making a mock-up.
Next, we need to do the same thing on the other side. Measure and mark 8 cm up from the bottom. Fold and press the bottom to the line. Be very attentive. These angles should be even. They should be made on the same level. Due to the fact that we made a seam here, it's very convenient for us to work with the vent. Let's go to the sewing machine to stitch the bottom together with the vent. First, we need to stitch this edge. Pin the overcast and stitch it. Natalie has stitched the first edge. This is how it looks like now. When we turn the detail right side out, it will be perfect. The edges will be hidden inside. Do not forget to cut the extra piece from the seam before doing it. This is how the detail looks like from the right side now. All the seams are hidden inside. Next, we need to stitch these details. The width of the seam should be 1 mm. We need to iron the details before stitching them. Very nice. We can start stitching now. Natalie is stitching the edge with 1 mm seam. When she reaches the overcast, she'll turn the detail. Watch what she's doing. Leave the needle inside the detail and turn the letter. We are stitching the overcast this way because we are working with the cotton. Seams look good in cotton garments. If you work with different fabrics, you can make invisible seams instead. Be very attentive. Next, we need to stitch the second side absolutely the same way. We are showing you the most simple ways of work. This is why we are stitching the angles not this way. But this. We are going to show you how to stitch it other way in the next video. Natalie is stitching the overcast at the bottom. The seam should go to the very edge. Fix it in the end. For this part of the vent to be attached to the base, this small detail should be stitched by hands. Please, be very attentive. Have a look at what Natalie is doing. She is making tiny, invisible stitches. Have a close look at what she is doing. This is the most simple way for edging the vents and the garments with no lining in them. Next, we need to make very beautiful decorative seams. They will also make the vents stronger. 
We need to draw a beautiful line for stitching on the right side. Notice where Natalie starts drawing. This is the point where the first part of the seam ends and the second one with the big stitches starts. Mark the point and draw a bias line through it. The seam should be fixed here. It should be fixed in the end as well. For the band not to break, you need to make one more tiny seam here. It should be made under the first one. This is what I'm talking about. For this seam not to break, we need to make one more here. You can actually make it closer to the first one. Stitch just the seam extensions. This is very important. Natalie has made a decorative seam here. It also makes the detail stronger. Anyway, we had to make one more seam lower. It will prevent the vent from breaking. This small detail can help you keep a skirt or a dress in order much longer. Next, we need to rip this part of the seam open and iron the details for the last time. I remind you that the seam on the center back should be pressed open and the vent closed. There are two seams here. They will prevent the vent from breaking. This is the easiest way for edging the vents and the garments with no lining in them. Due to the fact that we made a spacing seam in the vent, it was very convenient to work with it. I'm going to show you one more way for edging the vents and the garments with no lining in them. We need to draw the center back seam. The vent is going to be 22 cm long. In this case, the width of the vent is going to be not 4, but 8 cm. We are going to show you what it should be done for. The width of the seam extension is 1 by 5 cm. Let's cut the details. 8 cm here, 1 by 5 cm here. We are going to show you what to do next. Insert a couple of pins here as well. Next, we need to decide to which side to press the vent. As I've already said in the previous video, when you turn the detail right side out, the vent should be placed to the left from the center back seam. Now we know how the vent should be pressed. This is how it's going to look like. This edge should be 8 cm wide, and this one, the lower one, should be made tighter, 4 cm wide. Let's cut the extra detail. We've also cut two stripes of the interfacing material. They were cut on the grain, and they are 4 cm wide. They are as long as the vent is.
The grain in the interfacing material should match the direction of the grain in the main fabric. This is how they should be attached. Let's go to the ironing desk to double the details with the interfacing material. This is what Natalie is doing now. We need to draw all the needed lines and make spacing seams. The spacing seam should be made 4 cm away from the edge, right along the piece of the interfacing material. Notice that Natalie measured 4 cm distance before drawing the line. We also need to measure and mark 4 cm at the bottom in order to overcast it. Do the same thing on the other side. Natalie is making the spacing seams for the overcast. We recommend making spacing seams in order to make accurate details. Don't be lazy. Making spacing seams is not a waste of time. They will help you make accurate details. The technique we are showing you now is perfect for working with the thin fabrics. The bottom will be overcast with an invisible seam in this case. The vent is also going to be edged differently than it was in the previous video. Next, we need to edge the details with the novel locker. This is what Natalie cut the angles for. Have a look at the way Natalie is teaching the center back. Be especially attentive when stitching the angles. The second edge should be stitched absolutely the same way. Notice how accurate Natalie is. Let's edge the bottom right away. Natalie has a special tool for working with the details edged with the novel locker. Watch what she is doing. <laughs> Natalie, you are so fast. <laughs> the ends of the seams should always be hidden inside the seams this way. Natalie is ironing the edge details so that they are not wavy. Do it before stitching the center back seam. This is what we're going to do next. The center back seam should be stitched just like in the previous video. Mark the point where the main seam should end and the spacing one begin. Let's start stitching. Stitch the upper part of the center back with a regular seam. Stop stitching about 1.5 or 2 cm down from the angle level and fix the seam here. Change the settings in the sewing machine so that the stitches are bigger. And then stitch the seam to the very bottom. As I've already said, the stitches should be big. Iron the seams after stitching. Now 
Be very gentle. Press the upper part of the seam open and then press the vent close to one of the sides. Have a close look at the way the center back seam should be pressed. Be very accurate and attentive. The seam should be soft and thin, so that they are not seen on the right side. Have a look here. Next, we need to fold the wider detail of the vent according to the spacing seam this way. Press it with an iron. The vents made this way look more accurate than the ones made using the previous technique. Next, we need to press the overcast at the bottom. It should be ironed according to the spacing seam. Have a look at the way Natalie is pressing the angles. It's almost impossible for us to make mistakes. The detail should be ironed according to the spacing seams. In the previous video, I promised to show you how to iron the band in such way that there is an angle here at the bottom. It will be very beautiful. The both edges should be ironed the same way. Let's go to the sewing machine. Have a close look at what we're doing. In order to fold and iron the details accurately, we need to mark two points here. The point where the overcast crosses the vent and the point where the vent crosses the overcast. Be very attentive. These are the two points which should be marked. Next, we need to turn the detail wrong side out. Be very attentive. Make sure that these points match and then pin them together. Have a close look here. There are two checkpoints here. This one. Where the two marks match and the angle itself. Next, we need to do the same thing on the other side. Pin the marked points together. Next, we need to draw a line to connect these two points. The angle and the pinned marks. After that, the drawn lines should be stitched. What should we do next? Be very attentive. We can either cut the angles or fold them this way and turn the details right side out. Choose the technique which you like better.
Sometimes it's needed to make the ankle stronger, so the stitch details shouldn't be cut. Sometimes the ankle should be thin and soft. It mostly depends on the fabrics you're working with. The both edges should be made the same way. Next, we need to iron the stitch tangles. If you work accurately, the stitch detail won't be seen on the right side. It will make the detail much stronger. I like the way the angles look like now. They are very beautiful. The only thing left for us to do is to make one more seam here. We've pinned the beginning of the band. We pinned it on the same level with the beginning of the spacing seam. Draw a beautiful bias line for stitching. The seam will make the detail stronger and prevent it from breaking. This is how the detail looks like from the wrong side. It's absolutely perfect, as well as the right side. Due to the fact that we made a spacing seam here, we were able to stitch the details accurately without any problems. We are going to remove the spacing seam next. Do not forget to do it. We need to make one more seam here. It should be made for the vent not to break. Very nice. Next we're going to iron the details once again. Let's go to the ironing desk. Today we showed you one more way for edging the bands and the garments with no lining in them. Have a look at the mock-up from the previous video. We showed you two different ways for edging the bands in the garments with no lining in them. The first technique was a bit easier. The second one was more complicated, but also more beautiful. The details made this way look more accurate. The technique can be used for etching the details made of thin fabrics. The two details look the same from the right side. Choose the technique which you like better and which is suitable for the fabric you are working with. That's all for today. Be different and beautiful. We are Ira and Natalie. Subscribe to this channel, write comments, share the videos, press the like and the bell buttons. Thank you. Goodbye.